So this is my old gun. Everyone knows I love it. It's an old Maruku. And replacing it has been a bit of a journey. And it was gonna take a hell of a gun to steal my heart. Longthorn gun makers. Famous for their single pieced barrels, have long been a dream of mine. The trigger plate, recently released by Longthorn, represents the most affordable English gun on the market. They are based in Northampton, England, and are the brainchild of Mr. James Stewart. Jim, why did you decide to build a gun? Hmm. All right. Why did I decide to build a gun? It's a really good question. When you look at it, I like things. I like mechanical things. I think it was an evolution of what I was playing with. I was brought up on a farm. So shotguns were always around the place and I never really wanted to actually build one until later on. I mean, I think the first time I ever worked on a shotgun, I was 16. When I finished school, I did go looking for an apprenticeship as a gun maker. And um, I remember approaching a gunsmith in Liverpool. And literally the day I got there, knocked on the door and said, look, I want to be an apprentice. Uh, the guy said, yep, yeah, well, you're a bit late. You know, we're closing up shop. Which was, a, you know, a, a sad thing to be happening at the time. And then I went on to start a career as a tool maker. And in, and in reality, it worked out that that was a better way to go because I had I, I learned a lot more about manufacturing techniques and production techniques that are relative to making more production guns. But making our own gun, I mean, we did uh, we lived in Australia for ten years, and I made parts for guns, a lot of parts for ARs. And then it was just one day I just decided that we had all this knowledge and all this ability, we should turn it into something that we can put our name on. I love walnut. Something about it fascinates me. So when Jim said this journey would start in their wood room, I knew this was going to take some time. This was the piece. The perfect piece. Why is it not the piece anymore? The problem we get with some customers is just way too tall. <laughs> Start again. So we're still in the what? We've got five, six hundred blanks in this room right now? You have, and you've just... seen most of them. I've been banned from taking any more off the shelf. Um, because there's enough on this table, realistically, that they are all very good. We're going to make a decision on camera, then you can't go back. So we've got 20 right here, uh, and the easiest thing first is to just go through and discount the ones you don't like. I don't like this. This is too messy. I'm not I'm looking for lots of structure, but it's just not as nice as others. And I'm probably going to take those two away as well, because they're way too much like one of my other guns. You're always going to choose what you like. And I like all of them, because that's why I picked them. But you never know until you get in front of it. Like, you've, you've just tried it now. It's so easy to keep looking up and down the table and going, but I do like that one, and I do like that one, and I do like that one. Yeah. And, and what you're about to do, I'm gonna take them off you so that you can't go back. All right. So, there you go. We'll take them away. When we come to look at the wood for these guns, um, I have my own personal preferences, which don't, always equate into other people's preferences and sometimes it surprises me that what people's choices are uh, compared to my own. If you look for our wood pile, we've always got a, a large amount of deeply black, streaky, yellowy, pinky wood. Uh, we've got a, you know, a lot of stuff with very clear defined structure in it because that's what I choose. We choose wood from one end of the scale to the other. We can use the burl walnut because 
The way the stocks on the trigger plate guns and the side lock guns fit onto the action is they go up against um, a very square face. They don't rely on the horns of the wood being the mating face. They have, in the back of the action, they have a, a very flat face that the wood bottoms out on. So when you tighten it up on that face, uh, all the shock is taken through the stock and you'll see it with a lot of Italian makers where they still don't do that and you'll, they'll split from just behind the safety catch. We choose the wood, mostly it's Turkish, which gives us the greatest range to choose from. A few years back now, we went and we bought about 500 pieces and we flew into southeastern Turkey and uh, they went bundled into a car, driven through the mountains and taken to a place where somebody had an awful lot of wood to sell. And it, that was a very interesting process. And over three days, I think we would looked at two or 3,000 pieces of wood. There must have been, I don't know, 20,000 pieces to look through if, we, if we'd have wanted to. And we chose 450, 500 pieces out of that. That's the good way to go and get it because uh, you're choosing it at the source. Back to the wood room. When you come to see it properly, but it's not yours. No. There you go. She didn't even get the choice with that one. Thank you. It's just a bit standard. Let's keep going. Let's get rid of that one. I, don't, I think compared to the others, yes, that's, not, that, that's not the right one. You've got to remember this is going on a side plate gun. Mm -hmm. So some of what you see, you'll lose a little bit with the side plate. And we're now only down to eight, seven. Seven. So there's just another four or five hours to go. I think we're going to get rid of that one. It's too similar to that. I think that's the better piece. You could always have two. I mean, I'd look a bit stupid on a 50 bird day, you see. Just shoot really, really selectively. And each drive, pum pum, pum pum. All right, bag up, let's go have yeah. another drink. That's the way to do it. I am heartbreakingly going to remove this piece from the table. That's good, because it lives with the other one. It does. It's got a boyfriend, and it should stay. And I think somebody will buy this pair and have one of the most beautiful pairs of guns in the world. Yep. So I'm glad I haven't had a drink. I'm getting quite emotional. <laughs> it's genuinely difficult. Well, poor you. It is. It's not. This is not an easy task at all. So, so now we're going to make it very difficult because you've got that. This one, which is darker and lighter. It's quite an. It's a very interesting piece. That is a beautiful thing. Because we're allowed to get anal, let's remove that. Actually, now it, they're all lit up, this one looks less good. In a really nice way. <laughs> it's not, no, there is no less good. It's not fair. Technically, I would say all three of those are just big enough. Well, this one's plenty big enough. It is. Uh, let's take this through bit by bit. I think this one is a bit basic. It's like having a cherry red M3. It's really blatantly beautiful, but you need no sophistication to get why it's beautiful. Is that unfair? And I think it's probably one of the nice ones of the lot. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, it's, it's got like, enough going on. I mean, it's just beautiful. It's slightly lighter than the other two, which does appeal to me. You've got this little secret bit of burr. So you're going to get some as you as you shape that stock up. You're going to get some. So you are going to end up with a burl walnut stock. Just so you know, I have voiced my distaste of burr walnut over the years. However. Times change, people change. This is a nice piece of wood. So I believe this is the stage, the point of no return, right? That's about right. So you're just gonna chop that piece of wood into a rough shape. Pretty close to the stock shape. I'm standing back. It's I'll too late now, Johnny. It looks like a lovely gun. Let's go and shoot it. Perhaps we'll put a few slots in and maybe we'll put a bit of metal in the front of it. Let's go do that. Let's go do that. Our gun design started in 2006 with, well, primarily the barrels. Uh, and at that time, we decided the best thing to design was a side lock gun. Right from day one, we were going to make a trigger plate gun. Probably 2018, we took the step to get on with it. It was based on a lot that we've learned from 10 to 12 years of manufacturing side locks, you learn a lot about trigger pulls, you learn a lot about weight and balance, you learn a lot about everything. Every day's a school day. So it's, it's made a very interesting journey. We eventually ended up with something special. 
So the barrel making process. The steel comes in and it's basically a rectangular billet. 816 millimeters long, long enough to make a 32 inch barrel. We start by roughly milling up the outside shape of it and to give some straight edges at the steel mill, we get a huge plate of steel roll and then they take it off in slices. What we do then, uh, we just take the piece, clean it up on, all the, on the outsides and by clean it up, I mean we take two or three millimeters off each face to get it straight enough to, to start work with. And the reason we do it is so that we can accurately load it into the next uh, fixture in the machines behind us. So when it goes into the machine to be shaped, one of the things that we do a little bit differently is uh, everyone first assumes that you would drill the holes first and then shape the outside of the barrel to match the holes. Well, we don't. 2006, the barrels were originally designed as monoblock barrels. Two tubes, ribs, top rib, side ribs, all the bits and pieces. And if you look at the very early uh, solid, solid barrels for the side lock gun, they had the loop soldered on, the hook for the four end catch. And that was because it was part of the design that we, we moved on from making tubes into making a solid barrel. And the first barrels we ever made were uh, tubes soldered together. After a bit of trial and error with the barrels, soldering them together and trying to get them straight and checking them on a coordinate measure machine and doing some very fancy tests on how good they were, I decided they weren't good enough. Probably is good enough to do what it does, but we could do better. And it's not that I wanted it perfect, but I wanted it to be right. Because if you have the opportunity in life to make something better, you should. If you did it that way for the last 40 years, it doesn't mean it's the right way to do something. And with that in mind, we set to and tried to machine out of a barrel out of a solid piece of metal. I think the first batch of material that I ordered, I ordered 32 pieces. For some reason, I don't know why that was 32 pieces. Perhaps it was just the amount that came out of that one piece of plate that we got rolled. And we managed to get one barrel out of that, which was kind of off-putting. We launched the side lock guns with the one piece barrels at the game fair in 2010. So it took four years of development to get to the point where we were confident and happy with the product. It's not difficult once you get it right. The machine behind us is one of the machines that it takes to make these barrels three different machines, five different processes. Between the three machines that we have, they're probably the best part of one and a half million pounds worth to do the job that we're doing. Back in the factory, the wood was being fixed into the machine, ready to be headed up. Okay, so we've put the stock in the machine. And we're just waiting for the machine to warm up now. It's a really, really sensitive machine. Uh, with it being a 20,000 RPM spindle, it's very sensitive to temperature change. And um, if you look on the screen, it's now doing 17,000 RPM. It's going to go to 20. But what this machine does, when you get the spindle warming up and the tools warm up, it compensates for the length of the growth of the spindle. So at the moment, it's got 45.6 microns of adjustment that it's built in by itself to get the tool to be exactly the right length. So it's, it's really, really clever machine. As I said, once you make your choice, there is no going back. Go change tools. This is one of the most fascinating experiences of my life. It was akin to opening a well-wrapped gift as a child. You sort of knew what was inside. Still had to open it up and find out. Okay, Johnny, there we go. Just a little bit of tidying up from the machine. Because, which by the way I think is amazing, is you just went on the computer and told it that you'd like it an extra inch longer. The drill bit was just, just, just the right length. And this is the longest drill we can fit in this machine. So it did 
just reach. So what you're saying is Longthorn's customization peaks out at about six foot seven. Yes, it does. Uh, next, we're going to um, check it fits on the head and up fixture. And then we're going to put it on the other table. We're going to pelt change the machine, put it on the other table and profile the outside. I thought you was an angel. You flew away. This is also one of the only machining processes I can show you. Longthorn have a lot of carefully guarded secrets to protect their hard-won knowledge. It's here. It is done, sort of. It is a roughed out, headed up stock. A slight Monte Carlo stock. I think the grain worked out really well. Definitely. You couldn't, that, didn't you? you couldn't have chosen any better than that. When you have a stock made by hand or make a stock by hand, it's such a slow process that the wood slowly turns into the stock. And as such, you never really appreciate the difference between the blank and the finished product. No. It Whereas this, this way, it's so, because it, it's quick, Yeah. Uh, it just disappears before your eyes. And the new stock's born, and I say born, and not lightly, because it, it, it is as if it's been born all of a sudden. I mean, it looks nothing like no. the piece of wood we chose, apart from, like I say, the main characteristics are the same. I think this is gonna be a really good looking stock when it's done. Be a robin red breast or a squawking blue jay. So all I've done is I've put a piece of wood on the back to simulate the pad going on there. Mm -hmm. I've roughly shaped it to the same shape as the pad with the yeah. heel and the dip and the comb and the radius and everything else. So we'll we'll work on the length of it, then we'll check the height of it, the cast, the grip, everything else. So we'll just work our way through it now. How does that feel? Pretty good. I hope it does. What you've got to try and do now, over the next hour or so, we're going to get you to relax while you do that, rather than concentrating on the gun. So swinging it about and moving it about just gives you a better feel of it. When it comes to gun fit, we do things in a well, slightly different way to most people. Because we're not starting with a, a, a ready-made stock, we can afford to do a lot more shaping and fitting of the gun to the customer. Very early on, that became apparent that's what you need to do. Every, every customer is, is different. You know, we're, we're all built differently. Uh, I was once asked by somebody, who does your gun fit? Who's, who's responsible for your gun stock design? And I said, uh, well, it's not me, even though I do the majority of the gun fits. And he said, well, who is it then? And I said, it, it's God. He keeps making everybody a different size and shape. And it's true. Uh, you know, there might not be a God. I can't say there is a God, but the, the, the bit about the customers being different, every single one is minutely different. There are a range of sizes that will work adequately for most people. But if you want something that's ultimately comfortable, ultimately works with you, it has to be designed around you. You can take a third of a millimeter off the face of a gun to put somebody just in the right position every time they mount the gun consistently. And you would think, you know, a third of a millimeter, 300 microns, four sheets of photocopy paper, that's all it is wouldn't make a difference, but it does. It, it makes little differences. And the more consistent you get with your gun mount, the more accurate we can be with the gun fit. And it helps, every little bit helps. And that's what we do. So we will get the customer in, the, gov the stock will be roughly shaped up, and then we will attack it with files and sandpaper and sanders. And over the course of an hour or two hours, you know, however long it takes, we will make that stock fit you. And that's why we're a little bit different. So I'm just gonna put the trigger in what would be the optimal per position, and then we'll go from there. So what we're looking for now is the, the gun mount and your hand position. So the length, we think we're pretty close with the length. Mm -hmm. So if you just point the gun anywhere down in that direction. So, and then back to me. Just, I, I might have to touch you during this examination. That's all right, we both if had we, our COVID test. And I know it's not are, sexual. If, it might not be. Um, if my hands have to go anywhere serious, I will warm them up first. Okay? Yes, doctor. But what we're looking for is so that you have a really comfortable position in the grip. So here, 
across your hand, it looks pretty good. You've mm -hmm. got a firm grip of it, mm -hmm. and it looks like you you like to have a firm grip of it, but the way your knuckles have gone white, so that's pretty good. Your hand isn't overhanging the end, which we like. But if you go around this side, just back here, mm. I can feel that. You can feel that. So I'm going to do that. I just need a little line on there. First of all, we're just going to let a bit of wood out of here. How does that feel? Good. I want you to think about it, but I don't want you to think about it. I want you to just get hold of it and then think about if we're in contact anywhere where you shouldn't be. There. Just on those middle two fingers. Yeah. I mean, that's I just a touch of spike. That may be the only place that I can feel anything. Right, that's fine. Right, so. Up there somewhere. And bring it to me, to my eye. So you need to go across, but I want to go again, one more time, up at the ceiling. Okay, so you need to go across on the camera. Right, it's not masses. No, no, it's not, it's, it's just it's just enough. We just want to move you over a little quite bit. quite a flat shooting gun, actually, which is going to be nice. Yeah. So if you can mount that, you want to be a little bit closer because I go blind after that. So up there somewhere and bring it down to me. And we'd be pretty right about there. So yeah, we're gonna try that. Now you're allowed to stand however you want. You don't have to use my feet. But the favorite one is to stand like this. Yeah. And I always show them that's a bad thing. And we're gonna demonstrate on Johnny why you shouldn't stand like that if you're shooting. It's because as the gun hits you, you fall over. Straight to the pheasant? Straight to the pheasant. That's pretty good. Now this time, I want you to concentrate on the bird because you looked at the gun to make sure it was in the right place. So I want the bird, the bird, the center of the bird, body of the bird, fine. When you actually focus on the target, it's much better. Stars over there, focusing on the bird. It's a nice, smooth line through the bird. Now that was cheating, Johnny. That was cheating. Now, I've never seen such bad cheating in, in my entire life. Right, it's very hard not to just go, I'm gonna put that red dot through the yeah, so face. This, this time, I start a bit further over, start in the corner of the building. Wow, that is um, special. Something else. It is, it, it is really a completely different piece of wood. The whole of the stock changes. It has a life of its own. And as you get further into it and you shape it, you you lose some things and you gain some things. And there's a touch of gamble there, right? It is. Oh yeah. I think we won. I would agree. It is the most beautiful, highly contrasted burr piece of walnut. Two things that I absolutely despise, but I'm in love with it. Doesn't get any better. So at that point, Jim took my stock and put it on this demo action. I was supposed to take it away for a few days, and then this happened. <laughs> well, I'm making up a lot of time, I just missed two clay. Oh man. my word, that was uh, different. So that is bigger than something you're very familiar with. I was thinking about taking it home for the wife. <laughs> I'm back. genuinely going to f*** you up on this stand. <laughs> Get back in your room. He's fortified, he's looked out. I want to know, mate, what's in the bag because you've got a grin like a Cheshire cat all morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. What a beautiful thing. Change places so that Sasha can get us on film. And yeah, he's got a path. Yeah. Longthorn. <laughs> I've never seen Anne look so confused like, let me have a go then. Get the Maruku, get the Maruku. <laughs> Give me that. It's just a bit of an effortless gun to shoot. It's got a very expensive gun. It'll practically break them on your own. Well, that is the way that it works, right? Yep. The first thing to do today is to choose the action engraving. I've been kind of set on the snowdrop without actually seeing it. At the same time, Chloe has come up with this as a prototype engraving. It's certainly some really beautiful detail. This is what laser engraving is for, you know? The snow drops downstairs at the moment, and that's gonna ha just have a polish put over the top just to increase the contrast. And then we can sit down and try and make an adult decision. Once you pick it, you're stuck with it. So you best be in love with it. And I hadn't had any time to think about this, but it's really nice. My toss a coin. Genuinely? If I can't make my mind up in the next two minutes, genuinely. 
I like them equally. I'd have one of each. Because I can. Yeah, I was going to say, you'd have them both titanium 36 inch. I would, yes. <laughs> so talk me through the quantum, because there's clearly something specifically. It's the loudness versus the quaintness. It's yes, the one you the identify. quaintness doesn't bother me. I really like this. The similarities and inspiration it's got from the classic full scroll is a really beautiful thing. I absolutely adore it. However, next to the wood, from a distance, it's lost. There's a lot more detail going on here. It's a gun that you could probably look at a lot more and fall in love with every time you look at something different. The details on the leaves, everything about it is just nice. This is definitely the classier, more intelligent adult option, but I am a child who doesn't care about other people's opinions. And so your hunting godfather is Hungarian. And he taught you what? What did he teach you? He taught you to celebrate. So what you're saying is I should choose this one because it's more celebratory of all because the cool things in life. It's more you. It is very. I don't know. I, th I actually think that this is a this is more me, but this is probably a better representation of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a gun is supposed to represent you, and this pretty much represents a new you. This is new a new me. chapter in your life. Yeah. What? And it's who do you want to be? That's the red pill, and that's a blue pill. You know what the red pill is? No, the blue pill. It's what you would get. It's conservative. It's more conservative. It's English. You're right. That will be lost. That on a straight hand stock. Yeah. I know you're not a fan, but that on just. No, but that's where it belongs, isn't it? That, yeah, that's I think that is it. Belongs. Okay, let's get on with it. All right. I hadn't shot a flat shooting gun for years, but I kind of got used to it. I really enjoyed it. However, over the course of the clay tour, I fell back in love with clay shooting, and I, to be honest, learned so much. This has been a year of development for me by hanging out with Ed and Simon and people significantly more intelligent and senior to me in this sport. Can I stand on the bucket again or will I get abused? And so, as much as I loved the way this gun shot, I just felt the need for something a little bit more clay appropriate. So I phoned up Jim, who by this point had become a really good friend and had a discussion with him. And we decided to make a second stock. Deja vu time, guys. But at least we're not back in the woodroom. So we're here again, this time with a very sporting stock. So we're going to go for a more sporting fit, given that, you know... Different thing altogether. Uh, it's a very different thing altogether, yeah. An allowance, certainly, for more contact, yep. more consistency, <coughs> and seeing more rib. Well, I like to say that you're seeing less rib, Everything. straight over the top of it, yeah. and all you should see in your peripheral vision is where the bead might be. Yes. So, what we're looking for is somebody that can mount the gun properly, for starters. Oh. That'll be a massive, massive start for uh, fitting a gun. It's when, <laughs> when, you can get, sure. when you can get them to stand properly, and then once you've got that bit, then you've got to get them to mount the gun properly. But we're going to have to work with Johnny the way he is, so it's all right. Okay, Johnny, somewhere over there. When it came to Johnny's gun fit, there's definitely going to be some mountains we've got to climb and actually some chairs I had to stand on just to be able to look down the barrels. I've done gun fits on some tall people in the past, but never somebody that's six foot seven. You might think, oh, it's just the length of their arms or this and that. It's not. Everything, everything about that is different. I say this a lot, every day is a school day. I'm not adverse to learning new things and trying new things. You know, I, I look at Johnny's stance and Maybe there are some advantages for Johnny, and I'm not sure that it looks good. It does look good. I keep expecting a salute rather than a gunshot. I'm sure with help uh, and therapy, uh, possibly, it can, be, it can be weaned out of him. The good points with Johnny's gun fit, he's very consistent with the gun mount, and that's where most people fall down with gun mount. You can shoot lying down, you can do whatever, but as long as you mount the gun consistently, the results will be more consistent. It's, it's that first sign of madness, isn't it? Put in different, put, keep putting in the same thing and then expect a different result. Well, people do that with shooting. They put in consistently bad gun mounts and expect a different result. So yeah, it's interesting when you come to do a gun fit on somebody that tall. Uh, he's a nice chap, I guess. You know, relatively pleasant to deal with, talk to. In the grand scheme of things, there's worse people. I've dealt with worse people. Um, Can't think of any right now. No, no, not particularly. 
actually no, I've enjoyed the experience of doing the gun fit with Johnny because uh, he is he, he can be quite humorous and uh, in a southern kind of way. We're looking for the width of it to be not too wide. You don't want to be pushing into his collarbone and you don't want to be hanging halfway down his arm. At the moment, it's still quite wide. We've left material on there so we can slim it down a bit. If you could pass the pad, Mr. Carter. So this will be the pad that will go on there. And if you look, we've probably got about five millimeters of excess material at the moment. And what that's for is by leaving that on there, I can adjust the cast. Yeah. So next step, cut a bit more off, parallel to the line I just cut, and then stick this on temporarily so that we can trottle it. So how does the position of the pad feel? Doesn't feel, which is usually a good thing, right? Yeah, feels good. that's what I say, but it's only that much of a Monte Carlo again. Which is probably about right. I would just say, like, familiarity is sometimes 50% is of fit. <coughs> it is, and, and practicing. Quite often you can, you can improve people's gun uh, usage, but firstly they have to... Um, want it? Want you to do that. Let's have a look at that. It's pretty good though, isn't it, considering it was a guess. It's a very good guess. I mean, it's an educated guess. We've shot together quite oh, yeah, a bit. You made my last gun, like it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I've done it once or twice now. Yeah, almost like you've been doing it for years, in fact. Where it's got quite a lot of cast at face anyway, it's same as on the other gun, it's offsets cast properly as opposed to bends from a central axis, which as we discussed is <coughs> better. I've had a few gun fits in my life and I've had a few custom stocks made. I've even made one for myself. and. I don't want to blow smoke up Jim, but it's a very special experience having it done there and then. Somebody fitting you and tweaking your gun as you go is a really unique experience. Obviously when having a gun fit done, you need to talk to the gun fitter about what you want out of it. If you want to see rib, you tell them up front. If you want a flat shooting gun, you tell them up front. And as you go through time, as you've seen, your personal requirements and personal tastes can change. For me, it puts you in at a higher level, a higher plane. But why not have more than one stock? Wood is beautiful. Tess, we're gonna shoot this pheasant in the head, yeah? I think at this stage, let's um, fill, that good. fill some grain and see if I can actually hit anything. Yeah. Which would be an improvement on my usual ability. <laughs> So when it came to Johnny's stocks, we've now got two. And I'm in complete agreement with it. The first stock we did is a learning experience. Uh, I want to put my hand up from behind the camera and say, it is the perfect game fit. I uh, learned to shoot the absolute shit off of that gun. Yeah, and, and, I, and I agree. It's, um, it works really well, I've, I've seen you shoot with it. But the stock that we've just done is very much more oriented to clay shooting. With the clay shooting, you're always going to approach it relatively in the same way. You're, it's a much more controlled environment. So you, you can be more rigid with how you fit the stock. And, and when, when we look at the stock that we've done for Johnny, everything about it is much more controlled. Johnny could shoot with a 14 inch stock, it's fine but you'd have to think about that part of the gun mount and that part of the cycle of uh, shoot it. Whereas when you make the gun actually fit that whole area, then the stock up to the trigger, we've taken out the equation. It's not a bad piece of wood, Jim. Um, I Con think we've done all right there. Considering that's the, uh, that's the pallet that the nice wood arrived on, right? That's yeah, actually just a piece of pallet wood. The, you know the blocks that hold the little slats up? Yeah, it's not... so we glued all the slats together. We cut it in wavy lines. You guys have no end to your talents. All joking aside, <coughs> it's a stunning piece of wood and it makes me really happy that we chose that engraving. You, you just wouldn't see the other engraving with that wood. A little, couple of little holes to fill in. Uh, the problem with extremely high grade wood. Some character here. And to think the man who came here nine months ago thought bow walnut was repulsive. Well, that's why we've only got it on the bottom. You can only see it where you know it's there. What's the plan now? Barrel's blacked. Barrel's blacked. Checker it a bit. We're just going to do some patches again, I think. I think it would oh, yeah, be... Yeah, small segments. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... Maybe just like a kidney shape there. Just for your fingertips. 
Fully custom fitted stock. Yeah. For clays. Custom tailored. Beautiful. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so uh, just about to take Johnny's and a couple of other sets of barrels into the blackie. Into the cleaning tank for about 45 minutes. And then they'll be dipped in the wash tank to take any of the cleaning salts off. And then into the blacking tanks after that for about an hour and a half. It's a long process. It is, it is. The steel we use um, is very high grade compared to what would be conventionally made into a barrel. Looking at all the materials that have been used in the past and looking at what we want it to do, the material we chose and the chemical composition is very similar to EN24T as an example. So the, the material's heat treated until it's at its maximum elasticity, but also at a quite a high hardness check a normal set of barrels and in the Rockwell scale in 19T would somewhere be somewhere around 22 Rockwell, 24T will be somewhere around uh, 28 Rockwell and then the material we use will be up around 35 Rockwell so going from the lower scale we're about 50% harder but you've got to be careful with the hardness that you don't um, decrease the elasticity and the ductility otherwise it'll fracture. Another big reason for the material being heat treated to that condition is it's heat treated before we machine the barrel. So when the, the barrel billet is square, uh, it's already in its hardened state. So what happens with that is the material doesn't distort when we machine it. It keeps the stability very high in it. So we know that we can machine the barrels straight and they'll stay straight. One of the big problems of machining any material of anything is as you take a lot of material away the material tends to bend in the opposite direction. We've chosen the specific uh, chemical composition for the material and the heat treatment process to allow us to machine 26 kilos of material away leaving only just over a kilo and still end up with a perfectly rigid straight component at the end of it. Uh, it just happens to be a shotgun barrel. Johnny, it's been a while. Not very long actually, but it's been a while and we've finally got to the point where it's finished. We can tell it's yours, look, you can't get it in the slit. It's embarrassing. It is. So, this is it. This is it. This is the moment of truth. Right, We're ready. This is it. This is it. This, this is, is it. it. But there you go. Oh man. Now, it's mess. That is... Got it? Don't drop it. A beautiful thing. Pretty, isn't it? That it's is quite a pretty. Very nice thing, isn't it? Needs a bit more oil because we, you know, we've kind of a bit sooner than what we'd like to let it go, really. But it but is Christmas. The woods turned out amazing, hey? It was a very good choice. It was. It, was, it wasn't a bad choice that you made. <laughs> yeah. I can't make sure. I, I just like this bit. I only like that bit. So, John, are we happy? I'm close to tears, mate. This is the most beautiful gun I have ever held. She's done a, she's done a fantastic job of the engraving like, and, and even like the underlever catches all William Morris, everything. Yeah. It's just nice. It is nice. I am looking I like forward it. to shooting it today in the sport format. I mean, it might not be wise because today's scored. I don't care. Uh, we'll go figure it out, won't we? Yeah, I'm going to shoot that, so. What's better way to test this new gun out than on a flurry day? High pressure, high volume of target, and a variety of presentations. That is one pretty gun. Yeah. Three, two, one. First up was the rabbit flush. Thanks, that. This was a baptism of fire.
no time. Remember that it shoots higher than the other. Ah. Yeah. Ah. You One or two, mate, but I'm doing all right. I don't think we did bad, though, mate. Right, well shot. Thanks, mate. Well shot. After a crack at the driven flush, it was time for the crows. A true test of gun fit and teamwork. They found him. See, <laughs> don't even need me. See? Oh, this is great for you. Absolutely. The final flush was driven partridge, and the gun and I came into our own. Gam. Gam. Better than I thought. Straight off the top of the trees. Go. I get in trouble now though. I want bad, I don't think. Fantastic loader, mate. That was good teamwork. Must be well shot, mate. You did really well. I was literally, mate, just standing back and I wasn't shooting. And I was only shooting at what was getting past. And I shot about three or four. And that was that. The story of my dream gun build. I can't wait for the adventures we're going to have together. To go through this experience has been very special. Just drop it in the bin. Okay, sorry. You don't have to... From the indecision in the wood room, to the time spent getting to know the first stock, and now to truly fall in love with a gun. Thanks are obviously in order. To Jim and Elaine for their hospitality and continued patience with me. To the staff at the factory who worked tirelessly to get this built. And to you for watching. We'll see you soon. <laughs>